So today is the feast of Saint Josephine Bakita. Uh, Bakita was a name given to her, which means lucky. She was called the lucky one. When you look at her story though, it's difficult to see, well, it's easy to see the irony of that name. It's difficult to see the look in her story. Uh, she was born in 1869 in Sudan and she was the daughter of the local tribal leader so she would have grown up in relative affluence so wonderful wonderful countryside wonderful weather um, hot all year round which today sounds absolutely magnificent uh, to us here in our cold Glencomera uh, but wonderful happy upbringing all good until the age of eight when slave traders came to her village and took her from her family. She was then forced to march 600 miles uh, to, the, to be sold. And from then on, she experienced what one could only really call a, a hellish life. It was absolutely horrific. She was bought and sold about 12 times over the next 12 years. She actually forgot her baptismal name. She doesn't know what she was called when she grew up when she, in the village where she was born. Bakita was a name given to her by her traders, Lucky. In one particular family where she was uh, serving as a slave, keep in mind, she's like, she's maybe 10 at this stage. She's only a child. Her job was to, to take care of, of some of the children there. So she'd bring them their meals and uh, change nappies and that sort of thing. And things were fine until it seems that she broke a vase by accident and this offended the family's son. And because of this, she was beaten so badly that she was incapacitated for a month. Just, she wasn't able to move. She was so badly beaten. And afterwards she was sold. And she was sold to a Turkish general. And this Turkish general bought her for his wife and mother-in-law. So her job was to serve them. For some reason, it's difficult to understand. Uh, these two women were just sadistic, right? They, would, they enjoyed torturing her. So they would cover her in, in flour, draw things on her, draw little signs or symbols or whatever, and then with a razor blade, cut that sign or symbol into her, and then rub it with salt so that the scar would never heal. She had 114 of these artistic creations uh, cut into her skin while she served in that particular household. It was horrific, absolutely diabolical. After a few years, she was sold from that family to an Italian. Uh, he was the vice consul there, obviously, in, in Sudan. So uh, there she was treated, she was treated well, thank God. Um, still a slave, but at least she wasn't, she wasn't beaten, which I suppose it's still bad, but relatively speaking, it, it, it was a great improvement. So when this vice consul Legani was his name, when Legani was going back to Italy, she begged to go with him and he granted her permission. So they went off together back to his home in uh, place, a village called Schio near Vicenza in Italy. So there in Schio, life, life was, was relatively good. Uh, she served the family, they were good to her, and uh, she was able to live there uh, in, in peace. But the family needed to go back to Sudan for business. They didn't, they didn't want to bring uh, Bakita with them, so they said, look, can you stay with the sisters? They're called the Canossian sisters. So she stayed with the, with the Canossian sisters there uh, in her family's absence. And while there, she participated in the sister's life. So she went along to prayer and meals and spoke to them about God. And she says, I always knew God. I just never knew who he was. I knew he was creator. I knew he was up there somewhere. I, knew, I always knew he existed. I just never knew who he was, really. And so she was just fascinated by this God who she was coming to understand at the instruction of these Canossian sisters. She was really loving life there. Keep in mind, she's not baptized. She had never met Christians and before in Sudan so she was really settling into life there 
And after a while, then her, the family, the Italian family came back and said, all right, uh, Bikita, so you can come back with us now. And she said, no. <laughs> and they said, um, well, ye yes, you will. You, you, don't live, you don't live there. You live with us. And she said, I'm not going. And uh, she dug her heels in. And it was an awkward kind of a situation. <laughs> so it actually went to court. Because the sister said, you know, like, she's, 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 a, she's a good lady. Why would she have to go back with ye? And the family said, well, we bought her. So it went to court. And it was discovered that when she was sold, uh, so born in 1869, she was sold at the age of eight, about six, uh, 1877-ish. Uh, when she was sold at that stage, slavery was illegal in Sudan. So she was illegally bought and so she was illegally taken as a slave. Therefore, she's legally free. So at 21 years of age, for the first time, she doesn't belong to anyone since the age of eight. So she's in Italy, and she'd like to be a sister. So off she goes, and she gets baptized in the sacraments of initiation, and she lives with the sisters there. And for the next 42 years, she serves there in Schio, and was renowned for her gentle smile for her loving, prayerful presence. And when you read this story, it's, it's, it's wonderful, but there's this quotation that just jumped out at me. She says, I thank my captors because through them, I found God. I thank my captors. So the people because of whom she suffered all that torture, her childhood ripped from her, all of her teenage years like were in slavery. I thank my captors because through them I found Christ. Through them I found God. It's an astounding statement like this, this person who went through a life of hell and torture actually is able to, to see through that the means by which she discovers God. It's, it's, it is, it is such humility, there's such depth of soul and such understanding of, of God's unusual ways remember God's plans are God's ways are not our ways God's designs aren't our designs and so often he will realize a thing make a thing uh, a reality in, in a way that we would not necessarily choose or like but it works it gets the job done and so in our lives there can be moments of failure because of which we kneel down and say Lord I, I can't do this Moments of grief, because of which, remember, grief isn't the end of the story at all for anyone. The story continues just somewhere else. So, but in a moment of grief, you can say, Lord, where, where are you? Why would you allow this? And often in those moments, through those crosses, it's because of that cross that we discover our need for God. We discover that we, we're not God. We discover that we need the Lord's help and support, his love, his grace. So it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful story. It doesn't end there. Uh, during, when the Second World War broke out, the people saw little sister Bakita as their protectress. They would have invoked her, well, she was still alive, but like they would have prayed, they would have asked her to pray for the protection of their village. Skio was bombed, but not one civilian was killed. Not one civilian was killed. Astounding. She died today, 9th, uh, 8th of February in 1947, so just after the war. And she was uh, highly regarded by the local people. And she was canonized then by John Paul II in the year 2000. So from happy girl in her own little village, the terrors of slavery, the discovery of religious life and sanctity. It's an unusual route it's not one that I think any one of us would choose for someone else or not one she would have chosen for herself but it's the route that God chose to realize in her a great sang a great sanctity and a great intercessory power now for each one of us God's ways are not our ways but God's, God's ways work God's ways aren't our ways but they are the right ways and so we Ask the good Lord today. We pray for, for Sudan. We watched a movie there over the weekend together. 
and it, it just shows so much of the, the, the pain that uh, different countries in Africa still go through to this day because of corruption, because of human selfishness, because of greed. So we pray for Sudan. We pray for the continent of Africa. And we pray for each one of us that through the, the twists and turns of our journey towards the Lord, through the crosses that he allows, we may discover an ever deeper love for him. Amen.